guys are back watching the Spice Cast or listening to the Spice Cast whenever you get to it. The Thunder Gods uh, had no mercy, had a little bit of mercy, and then the Internet Gods were pissed off still. So <laughs> Joshua Dodd's still in the place. <laughs> well, see, like I said, the Metal Gods were not in our favor because... It was the Metal Gods first. <laughs> a Metallica tribute band's in town. Mm-mm. <laughs> there, was, there was just lightning bolts everywhere. We're lucky to have survived, honestly. <laughs> but uh, you're here to talk about the huge show, Exit Low Mill, September 7th. Uh, I, I mean, that's that's huge that you're pulling that in. Like uh, punk rock uh, history, uh, DNA kind of stuff coming to town, right? Yeah, man. I, you know, even with it being a couple of weeks away, I'm still at the point of just... I'm asking myself how the, how the hell did I do this? You know, <laughs> like, uh, I mean, of course I couldn't have really done it without that connection already being there because of mm-hmm. Mike Kilpatrick, or I couldn't have done it without Donnie Sharp, who was the one who kind of made contact in the first place. Yeah. With everybody. Nice. So very cool. Yeah. And Donnie from the go, go killers, uh, huge, huge local presence, and it's awesome to have guys like that, like around the scene and supporting the scene. And I mean, just having the uh, just the growth, I feel like, of uh, the shows and stuff you've been doing has done really well. And uh, you've, you. you have you've done Low Mill before, right? Or is this your first one? No, it is this. It's only the second one. Okay. Actually. Uh, the first one. Uh was actually my first uh booking ever really yeah uh which was uh the first time we hosted doyle actually Mm -hmm. um and that was that you know that's that's a pretty big undertaking for a first (laughs) no doubt Uh, but that was just uh november of 2015 Mm -hmm. so almost three years apart yeah had you been much to like low mill before like booking over there or anything uh back then yeah well i was uh uh i was working with uh uh prototype multimedia at the time right and just through mutual friend connections that you know kind of pretty much the same way this one happened you know we just kind of it just kind of fell in our lap Mm -hmm. and i was the one that was like i'll you know, I'll make this happen come hell or high water, you know? Heck yeah. Uh, but yeah, we definitely sold a lot more tickets to this one. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I'm sure like doing your first booking in the, in the same spot, you've got so much more like uh forethought on so much, so many things like, Oh, I better worry about this and that. And each venue I know from just work playing in a lot of them, each venue has its own special issues that you have to contend with so <laughs> yeah i mean in, in your prom- promoting from from venue to venue is interesting because you know you you're you're trying to make sure all the all the strong points are just you know amplified amplified but... as much as possible like specifically you know like with the first oil like Doyle, the band itself is a sellout band they you know anyway because mm-hmm. we we wound up selling out the second time but the first time I was proud because we pulled 205 people into low yeah. mill on a Monday night in the middle of November. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, but like with us doing exit low mill, well, like the strong points with that is, uh, it's BYOB. It's all ages. Mm-hmm. It's a massive complex. You know, it's a, <sighs> I'm, I'm pretty sure. And I could be wrong. And I'm sure, you know, somebody who watches this will, Tell me I'm wrong, uh, but whether rent to play or uh, not rent to play, I'm pretty sure it is the largest capacity venue is the connector where we're doing it. Oh, yeah. Um, in Huntsville, at least. Uh, but when we when we put X there, I just I, I, it, the thought kept occurring to me. I was like, if there was a perfect venue in Huntsville for them to play <laughs> it would be low mill oh yeah like, yeah because low mill kind of unknowingly and kind of haphazardly has that same visual presence in a way right right uh, 
I, th I think it's super fitting that like uh, you're bringing these punk shows back to low mill because I remember when Flymo first moved there. That's that's what 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 happened there. I mean, mm -hmm. it was a big empty building. There wasn't anything there. Now it's like fancy, you know, artists all over it. But they still have that connector, which they used for performance space back then. Like I remember going to see like Cancer Slug mm -hmm. and local guys playing there way back in the day. And I just think it's cool that it's kind of like revived and it's and it's uh in that whole aesthetic because uh I mean uh from from uh those twenty twenty thirty years ago not probably thirty by now for some of it but uh like it's still it's still got that essence there which is awesome that like you could bring it back there for sure yeah you know a lot of people i think the the common thing there for a while was a lot of people just want you know for insurance reasons or whatever mm -hmm. they just wanted to do like safe shows and right you know unfortunately that excludes a lot of the bands i work with right um <laughs> But you can't, you know, all every all of that cyclical event, you can't get rid of it. It will come back, mm -hmm. you know, and, and fortunately or unfortunately, it will come back stronger than the last time. It's, yeah. You know, it's like VD. <laughs> oh, yeah, the second round. It just becomes more resistant to mm -hmm. antibiotics. It's brutal. <laughs> Punk rock will never die. It's just going to mutate. <laughs> yes. But, yeah, I wanted to get you, for people that haven't been in the scene or haven't gone to any of these shows, I wanted to get you to like describe uh, some of the local bands and X just to people that hadn't been influenced by it. But what about Property? Can you describe them oh, for man. somebody who hasn't seen them? <laughs> property, God, I love those. I love those guys. Um, <laughs> I probably have a story for every band, so I'll try to keep it as short as possible. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say it sounds like you got a story there. For me. well. Uh, one of the one of the guitar players, Tommy Hodge, he mm -hmm. he's the guy that owns Prototype Multimedia. Okay, cool. Um, so, and at the time, uh, the other guitar player, James Simpson, he was working there too, and you know I just gotten hired on there, and you know they came up to me with I think I was there three months, and they're like, hey, you know we're trying to cut an album, you know would you want to work on it with us? And I'm like wow, fuck, my first, you know, my first punk record, like, yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, they, their shows are always just fun, you mm -hmm. know? It's it's high energy, you know, skate punk to a degree, pop punk to another degree. I've always kind of said that they sound, <clears throat> in a lot of ways, like, uh, minor threat meets the descendants with like mm -hmm. black flag sprinkled all over it. Yeah. Like, uh, but they, they represent kind of, uh, you know, given, given the length of time that property itself has existed, mm -hmm. whether they've been on hiatus or active. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they do kind of represent, uh, that older guard, Right. That you were talking about mm -hmm. like 20, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they're just, they, they're amazing songwriters and they represent a, a level of performance that I, I, at one time had thought people had just kind of forgotten about. Right. You know, that uh, full all in kind of, kind of show. Yeah. It's, it's like go for broke. If I, fall on my ass and break a leg then it, right it, i'll deal with that later. chip half my teeth yeah you know <laughs> bleed all over the place but it's always with the intent of fun it's never right. to, it's never to hurt anybody yeah i think that's what i i try and emphasize for people that are like outside looking in on the scene because i've always found it like a pretty it's like it's it's not that it's dangerous as much as it like it's intense yeah. you know what i mean and and like uh it's it's not all about violence and stuff and a lot of the, man a lot of these punk dudes are pretty are they're like pacifists some of them i mean you'll meet you'll meet all kinds at a punk show yeah like, but they <laughs> you know they look like they eat the bark off trees right like, uh, <laughs> they've they've pierced their teeth but you know they're like <laughs> well and a lot of people seem to they a lot of people especially younger kids or kids i say kids people of my generation yeah uh, because I'm only 26 years old, mm -hmm. uh, 
they don't really know a lot of the time that a lot of the that extreme imagery or sound that was created during like the first and second and third wave mm-hmm. it was created with a sense of of irony yeah like they were they were being extreme for irony's sake and that wasn't true all of the time but like you know uh there's an x song i'll talk about when we get to them that kind of you know embodies that spirit mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um but i mean yeah punks now you know i wouldn't uh trying to go pick a fight with one of them no <laughs> but you know you're not gonna these are people just like any others that would give you give you the shirt off their back if they got it right right you know? for sure and uh the go kill killers uh long standing i like this show because you got i mean i, I was reading up on x and they've formed in 77 yep. or, or so like that is that is a long time to be on the road i can only imagine what kind of stories they got but just to have your music be out there and change change no doubt like playing playing some of your original songs as a lot of the bands do like people will always shout out oh they want to hear that first album stuff like you you go through some like cycles and stuff but uh, how about how about the Go Go Killers? Can you describe them to, oh, to people that have not experienced the uninitiated? I wanted to say. <laughs> well, I can. I the first thing I would say is if before I say anything else is if you know who the Cramps are mm-hmm. and you love the Cramps, you'll get it and yeah. you'll love it just as much. Um, it's not, you know, it's it's not like it's a rip off or anything, but mm-hmm. it. it it is in this in a parallel vein. Um, it's like uh, like sixties grindcore films on a bad acid <laughs> trip with Hank Williams. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Like, I was gonna say it's like going to uh, acid church while you're uh, like I don't know riding a meth dragon through hell country. <laughs> Well, you know, to me, they, it's, it, it's like almost, uh, like they talk about space and stuff, but it's got, it's like out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? (laughs) Well, to me, they represent, you know, and this is a cliche statement, but they represent a time in, in our country at least, uh, but they don't represent the well-known part of that time. yeah you know the, they the represent like part of the they represent what was the maybe the underbelly mm-hmm, of society mm-hmm. at that time and they they incorporate a lot of that different Im- imagery and it's not from any one particular decade mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. just all over but you know i i i've seen them do short sets i've seen them you know do endurance sets where yeah. they'll, they'll play two two and a half hours like or they'll do back to back nights, you know, which a lot of bands, unless they've been on tour, you know, they don't they don't know. Like even just doing a two nighter back to back, you know, that'll take it out of you. Oh yeah, you know. Um, and they really go all out at their shows too. Absolutely. Always, <laughs> absolutely. And they're decked out too. They've got layers, so you know they're uh, burning through some water and calories. Well, I've talked. I've talked. Uh, so many times extensively with uh, one Alabama Sharp about it, and in my personal perception of it, is I think that they played a a major part in reminding not only the punks and the metalheads, but really anybody in North Alabama who saw them when they came around that you can have a presentation, right? Yeah, because they came along at a time where nobody was doing that. Like, and I felt that that was the start of a lot of what we've been seeing with people that are starting to experiment with, you know, looking a certain way or, you know, even stage props. Oh, yeah. Um, Like, you know, how how the moose has become known as the dildo band. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And there's a band, I can't remember if it was at Loud Fest. Um, damn it, I wish I could Heel remember turn. their name. Heel Turn. Yeah. yeah, they had they had masks on, they had some Luchador stuff, they had some chains, they had all, all sorts of cool stuff. 
What's interesting about them? Those is are that, young guys too. Those are like the next generation of stuff. Yeah, I think they're. I'm not really sure of their age. They they seem like they might be a little bit older than me, mm-hmm. but not not very much. You maybe, know, maybe they're just useful, youthful looking guys. Yeah, well, because they punk rock so much. Yeah. Well, they uh, <laughs> I've heard rumors that the lead singer was was or still is a professional wrestler. So, ah. so I, that's a lot of where that comes from. But I've talked with him too. They're, I mean, they're definitely a crowd favorite in Huntsville now just because they, they're they extremely super tight and right. they just kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, for sure. But even if the music isn't necessarily your thing, I think even, a wrest- you know, even if you're just a wrestling fan, you can still kind of get into it because right. they – poke fun at a lot of that but at the same time it's in the same vein of the go-go killers where like you know when they're on the stage they take their their characters seriously yeah yeah Um, they put forth that effort which is it's so huge mm -hmm. and i like i think it just brings the scene up on another level because if you just have everybody doing the jeans cover band thing it's like that's it's just like my personal hell if I woke up and it's just like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm stuck in the bar just listening to these cover bands with a like guy who just woke up and he's play <laughs> he's playing the same song he played like t- an hour before at a, at a lunch gig or something. I'm like, oh, I just can't handle it. I love it when people put that that extra layer because it, it's so much so many opportunities for interaction with people. Like you said, like a wrestling fan mm-hmm. might clue in on this whole scene that they wouldn't be even exposed to right like like i said they may not like heel turn but they may like them enough to go see them a few times to see yeah the whole the whole uh the whole shit bang presentation yeah yeah and through that they may find a band that they're like wow this is my new favorite band you know i think one complaint I've always heard from musicians is like, well, no one goes to concerts because they can all pull it up on YouTube and watch it anytime they want to. And to some extent that's true, but I think a lot of bands have started to realize that if that is the case, then that means that they have to work that mm-hmm. much harder oh, yeah. to make each show as memorable for the folks that were there as possible. So when they go home and talk about it, somebody that hasn't been will go like, well, fuck. I gotta go see that. Right, you know, yeah, yeah. Again, everything is cyclical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and the uh, I think there's still and there's still a huge thing for live music for sure because I mean a lot of the uh, bands are making most of their sole money doing the touring part of it because you can't. I mean, you can look at it on YouTube and see mm-hmm. it's like oh it's packed or like there's a fog machine, but you haven't like slid around on the beer and. <laughs> You haven't you haven't lived the lived the thing until you've been there, you know. Well, I think the bigger the the biggest group that that affects, you know, are basically the legacy bands. You know, the mm-hmm. bands that have been around for forty years in or thirty years or even twenty five years, and by now have figured out who right. they are and what they what they are. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, um, but. If anything, it should it should just make you know underground or independent bands. You should be making your shows events and, mm-hmm. and unique events and memorable events. Like even you know you play to the best of your ability and you put on the best show, but even if these people don't like you enough to go home and say that oh my god it was the worst band in the world and you oh you had to been there they just were the, they were just so bad. Most people are gonna like, wow! If they're the worst band in the world, I gotta see this. Like, <laughs> right? If it was really, yeah. That's that's how Inf- Motorhead happened. Especially like these days, infamy is just as good as fame, mm-hmm. <laughs> because there's so much competition. And I mean, people what they want to do on their Friday or Saturday night or whatever. You're competing with the entire I- entirety of human knowledge that's on the internet. So yeah, so yeah. figure your stuff out. <laughs> is the same thing that happened with Motorhead. The enemy called them the. Uh, the world's it's like the worst band in the world or the world's worst band <laughs> and that one thing just made All their fan took. base go whoosh, yeah and it, and it expanded them so yeah, great yeah 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 plus even if you have uh if you have your infamy you're gonna have uh people fighting over it and that's just good mm-hmm. press right there exactly because i mean would you rather I, I like to think about it a lot a lot of art like what's what's your story that's told with your like music or art or whatever and what are 
what's the second step? Like, what's what's that person who saw it going to say? Because mm-hmm. if they're not going to say anything, then you may just miss out on a majority of your audience, you mm-hmm. know? Like, but uh, tell me about X and maybe your personal experience and like explaining that one to or telling people about that. Well, I think out of the other than property that I'm aware of, I think out of most of the everybody else that's going to be involved in the show in one fashion or another, I think I'm I have, I've never met any of them. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But with their music, uh, when I moved up here and I, I met uh, Donnie Sharp and Mike Kilpatrick. Uh, you know, I kind of started hearing their name tossed around in conversations mm-hmm. from time to time. And then I kind of started checking out their music. And, and some of the songs, you know, it as most kids do when you're growing up, like you hear certain songs in certain places and you may not ever remember who it was or what the song title yeah. was. But something about that song sticks in your head 10 years later. You're like, oh, I heard that before. Right, right, right. Um, And it's just the more it kind of was a progress, you know, a gradual progression, but the more I listened to them, especially those, uh, first four albums that were produced by uh, Ray Manzrick, who was mm-hmm. the keyboardist of the doors. Mm-hmm. Um, the more I just, I was like, this is amazing. Like, right. You know, this is, it is punk, but it's so different from everything else that was going on at that time. Like, you know, these guys, were <clears throat> these guys were in the same scene with you know Black Flag, Circle Jerks, The Germs, uh, mm-hmm. Al- Alice in the Bags, uh, uh, Minutemen, Dio, you know. So, I mean, honestly, so many bands came out of Southern California, great bands came out of Southern California at that time, yeah, you know, but them amongst all pretty much almost everybody else Mm -hmm. they fit right in but at the same time they stood out in the best way possible because they were so different right um they seem like really like poetry based and like verse based almost and how they like put their songs together sometimes to me absolutely like the lyrics have a lot of weight well the you know it for anybody that reads their story that's kind of one of the pieces of the puzzle as to how they came together was yeah. John Doe and Exine uh, met at a poetry workshop. Right. And that's how they came together. And John Doe brought her into uh, what would eventually become X, which was just him and Billy Zoom at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, but that, that was one of many different facets of that, culture in in southern california and more specifically la at that time yeah. is there was a lot of <clears throat> artists and in art thing you know art happening right, all around. right. uh yeah well i wondered if like uh to me it's kind of like if you you survive long enough in your punk band you start playing folk music eventually <laughs> oh no actually the joke <laughs> is is what happens to a punk guitarist when he gets better what he starts playing metal Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> but but I wonder if like but and I was thinking about that as I was like tossing around that question like do you do you you know do folk bands like eventually become punk bands or also is is punk just a type of folk music to me cuz to me it kind of makes sense that it's like a it's like an entry like it's an accessible music sort of. So I wonder like your thoughts on that or how 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 they might relate like punk and folk. Um I don't, I'm. I don't know so much about the last couple of uh, waves or generations of it, so yeah. so much. But, uh, yeah. I mean, it kind of the the first wave. If you really really analyze it, it, it was basically protest music. Right. It was just not in the same vein as like the hippies in the sixties. Yeah. You know, where they had the lyrical protest, but the, the unspoken protest was that they stopped, everybody stopped playing electric instruments Mm -hmm. and went to acoustic based instruments. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, but it's, it's, 
you re- like I said, you really do have to like, you know, sit and read the lyric sheets and, and really like think about what's being said, because if you, you may hear and understand what's being said in the song, but mm-hmm. it can be really easy for a lot of punk to come across as just like, I'm angry and I hate this and blah, 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 right. blah, but that's not what it's all about. Yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah. And, uh, so let, let's remind people again, it's September 7th at low mill X will be there. Go, go killers and property. And, uh, do you have any other, like, I know you, I, I should mention, we just talked to the moose and, uh, you worked on earth mover, which yes. is an awesome album. Thank, Thank you, you so much for like producing that. Did you do Thank the you. live recordings as well? Or are those separate? Uh, yes. Um, I don't remember specifically what show it was, but I think those were recordings we captured uh, from some show at Maggie Myers. Yeah, while while back, much um, more affected by alcohol apparently. According to Jake. According to Jake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm one of uh, out of the many different hats that I wear. Yeah. Uh, as far as being a sound engineer, you know, I was fortunate in in the aspect of I had a hobby that became my job. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it stopped becoming my hobby. Yeah. So I, I record shit all the time live, yeah. you know, and I don't necessarily ever, I don't necessarily ever tell anybody, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm planning to like release it and make money off of it or yeah, anything. Yeah. It's just more like if I hear a band that I like, or I know I'm going to run sound for a band that I like, mm-hmm. and I've never worked with them, you know, I want to see what i can do oh yeah you know and if it sounds good every single time that i mix something like that if it sounds good i send it to them that's awesome and i'm sure you like catch some really cool like moments that you wouldn't get by uh you know worrying about it all the time if you just record it oh absolutely i mean because i learned very quickly uh with doing the live recording you know if you're gonna if it's not planned don't tell the band before they play yeah like and more times than not, it if they don't realize what's going on after the fact, you get really good performances and really, you know, authentic stuff. <laughs> yeah, to the point where it sounds like, it, you know, if you take away hearing any like crowd noise or anything like that, mm-hmm. it sounds like a studio record. Oh yeah. Well, I think there's a there's a weird mental issue with musicians and playing in the studio because it's such a for a a band who just plays all the time it's a really weird environment to play music compared to like i always play like in front of some number of people with everybody right together and a lot of times in the studio you're all like segmented up or you're you're over tracking certain parts and that can be like that's like a whole nother ball game for some guys and i think the way you play uh has to ch- has to change or just ends up changing some depending unless you're just ready for it you know what i mean from my personal perspective um because i am a musician too for those that mm-hmm. don't know uh that for me that never really was a thing i just kind of at at some point extremely early on i just understood that that was just another part of it yeah you know that's to me that's even now that's what a band is supposed to do you, mm-hmm. you're supposed you're supposed to go play shows and make records right like in and, and you have the even balance of both so that's why i always like tell people i think any band and it does quality of recording is irrelevant to this but you should be trying to put out you know one mm-hmm. release a year oh you know, yeah even if it's an ep um I forgot the question. <laughs> oh, we we're just talking about like people playing in the studio versus live. Right. Second part of that is as a studio engineer, I've come to understand that more because mm-hmm. I, I see it from the outside perspective. Yeah. Like in vocalists, usually more times than not, or more so than anybody else, they're the ones you see it with. Because mm-hmm. especially if you're multi tracking them and they're by, their sel- by themselves in the booth. Yeah. Like, you know, they'll start like talking really fast and they and, 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 and stuttering all the time and, and they get very nervous and, 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 you know, they, you, so you, you as a producer engineer, you have to kind of be the guy that <clears throat> not hold their hand because your, your main job is to get the best performance out of them. And if that means you got to piss them off, you got to piss them off. Right. 
Um, but you know, if you, along the way, you just kind of like, you're reassuring about it. Cause especially if you're working with somebody that you think is talented, it's very easy to say that because you feel it. Mm-hmm. You really do feel what you're saying, mm-hmm. you know, but I've been, for, I have been very fortunate in that fact. I don't think I've, I can't recall ever working with a band in the studio where I was like, Eesh. like <laughs> But I typically only go after the bands I'm a huge fan of. Right, right. You know. Well, very cool, man. Well, thanks so much for talking to me about it. And X will be at Low Mail September 7th. Uh, Joshua Dodd's here. Uh, hopefully more good shows to come. And maybe you'll get a break after this one for a minute. But do you uh, plan on booking like Low Mail some more? Or? I think possibly. Um, you know, as long as they keep... Uh, they continue to keep those rooms open to rent and stuff, uh, which hopefully this will be kind of a testament to them that, uh, it is possible with the right acts to to bring massive crowds into Mm -hmm. those rooms. Uh, I think after X, I got two, I have two months and then, um, Michael Graves will be here with his full band. Oh, very cool. Along with, uh, Argyle Goolsby from Blitzkid and his new band. And a uh, Canadian death rock band, Nimvind. Nice. Uh, with the Casket Kids opening this show. Awesome. Very cool. Then after that, who knows? We'll see. Well, thanks again for tuning in, guys. Uh, check them out September 7th at Exit Low Mill. It's on Facebook and all that stuff. Uh, so there's uh, a few different ways you can go. Uh, you can buy tickets through the band's website. You can buy tickets through the event page to find the event page uh, for anybody that's not already friends with me on Facebook. <laughs> uh, go to Under the Moon Productions and go to the events, and it'll be listed in there. And I'm pretty sure Low Mill has uh, the ticket link and the details yeah, listed on their site. I believe they do. But thanks again, guys. Uh, we'll keep it spicy and have a great night. We'll see you next time. Um, I won't even mention who we have next because I'm going to be out of town for a couple weeks. Dan will be taking over in a few weeks. And uh, just just take it easy and show up for the show. It'll be huge. And I, I guess, are, are you all like selling out of tickets? I mean, well, there, there's a cap. Uh, well, there is a cap. Uh, and at this point, we are not sold out. There's still a chance. Uh, at least hopefully by the time this airs, we are still not sold out with me saying this. <laughs> right. <laughs> but as of when this is being recorded, we have a uh, little bit less than 200 tickets left. Okay. Um, and I kind of suspect the rate at, the, at which they will are selling will uh, pick accelerate, up, yeah. accelerate very quickly. And we'll probably... I'd say... I, I've been telling everybody I talk to if if you think you want to go to the show I would I would just go ahead and buy the ticket mm-hmm. because you can resell them or transfer them or, or however you know you want to say that but if this is something you want to see but you're not sure get your ticket now because if it turns out you're available that night and you don't have a ticket, you're probably not going to get in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a big room, but it's probably going to be a huge turnout. So guys, uh, we'll see you there over at X September 7th at low mill. And thanks for watching spice radio. Rock on thunder. Gods don't kill us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to ride the lightning just yet. This has been a production of spice radio from Huntsville, Alabama. You guys know what you want and you don't have to do too much to get it. Get with us at spice-radio.com. If you have a podcast, you make music or art, or you have an event that you want to promote in the Tennessee Valley, you can find us at www.facebook.com slash Spice Radio Huntsville or on Twitter at Spice Radio HSV. And again, our website, spice-radio.com. <laughs>